Okay. It's up to us. Okay, three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Uh -huh. You can start it. Yeah, they are starting. Yeah, start it. Yeah, yeah. It's a start now. Yeah, no one. Yeah. So sorry. No, battery is, battery is flat. Battery is a bit. Uh, you can start it now. Yeah. Your back. Can I put it? Yeah. Oh, put it on the other side. Move it on the other side. At the back, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you ready? Yeah. yeah? You want to start? You start. Three minutes, yeah? You want to start? You want to start? Uh, you, you start. Oh, you will let me say that again. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbi Sadri Sadri. Wa Yasri Amri. Walu Tam Bilsani Yafqa Ukali. Alhamdulillah, Rami. So, Alhamdulillah, my brother here today. Um, uh, it's going to be an interesting debate. Maybe he say, says 15 minutes. I would love maybe 45 minutes debate. Um, Last week he challenged me to a debate. He said, <laughs> I keep on telling him that. I keep, I keep, keep on saying that he's running away from me. So he said, this Sunday, that's today, he challenged me to a debate. Uh, so he's going to be proven to me. Uh, the debate is all about oneness of God. When I come here, it's all about uh, oneness of God. Because we, the Muslims, we are telling the Christians, we are inviting, inviting them to the religion of all the prophets, including Jesus, which is Islam. Islam simply means submitting one will to the, to, the, to the will of Almighty God, Allah. We the Muslims we worship Allah the Creator, not the creation. Um, the, Christians, the Christians and the Muslims have a lot in common. When you read the Bible, we have a commonalities. For example, the Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, was born miraculously without any main intervention, without a father, and then he, he healed Though those born blind, lepers, and even raised Lazarus from the dead by God's permission. But he was only the Messiah sent to the children of Israel. He never said he's God. He never said, worship me. Uh, and if you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is an inconsistency between the two. The Old Testament God made it clear to the children of Israel there is only one God. He's not a man. He's a savior. He created everything. Now, when you come to the New Testament, John is telling a different thing. You see? The fourth gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John is the one when he wants to know about, when he hears about this alleged divinity of Jesus Christ, it's only John, 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 John. You understand? And the Quran, Allah made it clear in Surah and Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 171. I've quoted this extensively here. So I'm going to quote it again for my brothers to know the position of Isa, alayhi salam, peace on him, Jesus, one of the mightiest prophets of Almighty God, Allah. Nisa 4, 171. He said, O oh people of the scripture, O oh Christians, do not go to extremes in your religion and do not speak lies against Allah, but speak the truth. The Messiah, Isa, Jesus, the son of Maryam, the son of Mary, was no more than the messenger of Allah. And his word, which he bestowed on Maryam, and a spirit created by him. So believe in Allah and his messengers. Don't say three, don't say trinity. In the Hukaira Lakum, desist if you better for you. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one Lord, one God. Far exalted is He above having a son. So this is a position. Uh, we believe in all the prophets and we do not make any distinction between them. Yeah? My time is up. Yeah? Three minutes. Go on, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, for you to understand and know God, we believe in one God. But also, I want to ensure my friend here that is written in the Old Testament that there are three that bear records in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And now when you look at the book of Genesis in the creation, that there was nothing completed, even no earth, no rivers, no mountain, no vegetation. And then God said, let us create man in his own image. That is Genesis chapter 2. But first of all, they said before God created anything, the Spirit of God moved in the firmament. After the Spirit of God moved, then God spoke the word, let there be light, light came to existence. Let there be vegetation, let there be rivers, let there be trees, and all these things were created. And then when you look at again Genesis chapter 2, I think it might be verse 18 or so. He said, let us create man in our own image. So now, 
who is the father talking to and who was there? And I quoted before in the Old Testament that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And now when my brother Lem Lenin, Lemon or Lamin. Le uh, Lamin. Lamin. Lamin, you got a body and soul and spirit. That makes Lamin. That means there are no three. You are one Lamin, but have a spirit, soul, and body. With God is one God. He's got the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. You can't say one, two, three. Because Spirit can never be counted. Even right here, we got wind. You're not going to tell me there's one wind in Speaker's Corner, another wind, two wind in Earth's Court, three winds in Africa. No, it's the same wind that blows in different directions. I want to go to Isaiah 9, chapter 6. To let my dear friend know, Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This one is talking about Jesus. He's not talking about any other child. In the history of the world, we have never seen a child born like Jesus. And not only that, to make my brother know, when the angel of God, the angel Gabriel came to Mary. So I think that the prophecy, uh, this, you know, uh, is when I come here, alhamdulillah, praise to be Allah. I come here to educate the pastors, uh, the Christians here about their Bible. Uh, we know the majority of them, even the preachers, have only studied the whole Bible from the Genesis Revelation and they cherry pick the verses. And this, as a 9 6, is a very popular verse. I've just put into context. Just about an hour ago, I had a debate, debate with uh, Martin, the African pastor, and then I put that into context. And a, even the Jewish man had to come and explain as a 9 6. Yeah, but he says something he said in the Old Testament. Is there? He said, uh, in, for, "There are three that bear record in heaven: the Father and the Word, and and the Spirit." You got to show me that in the Old Testament. I want to see that verse. You understand? Because I know is first Epistle of John five seven. First Epistle of John five seven said, "For there are, there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one." But in Old Testament, you got to show me. Show me the proof. You see, this concept of Trinity is a fabrication, as I said. God made it, don't say three. The prophets of the Old Testament. And the children of Israel were not Trinitarians. This concept came later on. The concept of Trinity, you see, it this comes from the Athanasian Creed. The Athanasian Creed, most Christians don't know about it. Those who know it, they don't even know the words in the Athanasian Creed. I'll quote the Athanasian Creed later on. But let's go to um, the, uh, the, the Quran. Because when it comes here, sometimes you are so immersed in trying to uh, quote from the Bible and expose the Christians, we end up not giving proper dawah. So the Quran has 114 surahs. I keep on quoting here every week. 114 surahs, we call it chapters from the first surah, first chapter, surah al fatiha to the last surah, the 114 surah, surah an nas mankind. Yeah, if you want to know about the concept of God, uh, the best definition, we go to surah Ikhlas, which is the 112 surah, which reads, say, Kul hu Allah ahad. say he is Allah, the one, Allah who summoned. Allah, the absolutely eternal. Allah who is self-sufficient. Allah upon whom all depend. He begets not, no, he's begotten. And there is not no other like him. He's not a man. He's not his creation. Now, when you go to the Bible, this, the fourth uh, the verse of Surah Ikhlas is in there. In Isaiah, if you read the Bible, in Isaiah 46 9, God said, Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Let me call you from Ahad. You go to Exodus 9 14. God said that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. And Hosea 11 9, God said, For I am God, I am not man. You see, we are we're inviting the Christians to the religion of all the prophets. We've been in Isa, we've been all the prophets. And we did not make any decision about any of them. You understand? Prophet Muhammad is the last and final prophet sent to all mankind. Quran, Allah said the Quran. Talk about time here. Yeah. Go on. Well, you see, you can base this argument 
when the scriptures like in the book of Genesis or the book of Isaiah is in the Quran, which is not. So the Quran can quote anything that they like. It's not similar. Because this is a word that is written down. It shows us who God is. First of all, when you read the Quran, I could say it's a little bit vague because it doesn't give a full explanation of certain things, especially the creation of the world. You can never find a full description, a full picture, how God created the world, how many days it took. It's not really very clear in the Quran. Now, when I read in the book of Genesis, I will read it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without any void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the water. You know, the Trinity, as uh, my dear friend, is rejecting, because it's not in the Quran, that's why they are rejecting. But it's all in the Bible. In the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, he said the Spirit of God moved in the firmament, and then God spoke the word. So that means God the Father has a spirit and has a word. The spirit moved, and the word God spoke, and things came to creation. And not only that, if I can remind my dear friend here, I might not go to the scripture, in the book, uh, in the New Testament, when Jesus was baptized in River Jordan, the Bible tells us that the heaven was open, and people who were there heard the voice of God. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, you are telling us that Jesus is not God or not the son of God. Now look at you and I. We got fathers and mothers. We are human beings. My father is a human being that makes me a human being. Since Jesus is the Son of God that makes him God, the reason is, as I said before, three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And not only that, in the Old I've, Testament, read, in the Old Testament. I've read, listen, I've read in the, in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, the Spirit of God moved in the firmament, and the Father spoke, let there be light. So the Father the, was in function, the Word was in function, the Spirit was in function. So you cannot refuse that there's no Trinity. It is one God, and that God has got His Word. So the thing is that this concept of Trinity, as I said, is a fabrication, a concoction. Jesus was not a Trinitarian. No, the children of Israel, no, the prophets. All the prophets were monotheists. Jesus, when he was on the earth in the Bible, makes a distinction between him, him and Almighty God. You know, Jesus never said he's God, never said worship me. So, as I said, if you go to the, I'm going to the Quran again, Allah made it clear. Said he's Allah, that we should worship him. Now that Bible is here, why is that Jesus never said he, he's God, never said worship me? Never said he's the creator. Never said he's co equal, co eternal with Almighty God. God, the Son, is not the Bible. The word Bible is not the Bible. You know, it's amazing. You are saying the persons, persons, three persons, not here. The word Trinity is not here. Now he said, for there are three that bear record in heaven, there's the Old Testament. The Father, the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. I said, first epistle of John 5 7. I'm just waiting for you to quote from the Old Testament. Show me where in the Old Testament. So, if you read the Golos Quran, in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 14, 1 4, he said, Innani an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'abuduni wa akimi salat. The decree, Allah said, Indeed, I am Allah. There is no deity, there is no God except me. So, worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. Allah made it clear. You understand? When you go to the Old Testament, yeah, the children of Israel, they did not have to figure out who God is. They worship Almighty God, the Creator. Not Jesus. There is no single verse in the Old Testament where, or in the Jewish tradition, where the Messiah was to be fully God, fully man. It's not there. I'm at wait. I'm waiting for you to show me. They read the Bible. Yeah? In the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus. Yeah. In the book of Exodus, chapter number 3, verse number is it 15. Uh, God said to Moses, 
go to, go to the Israelites and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. But when you go to the New Testament in Acts 3, 13, it says that Jesus is the servant of the God. Acts 3, 13, 1, 3 says, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus. If Jesus is a servant of God, how can he be God? He's incredible. Now he's called Isaiah 9, 6. Look, when I come here, I said, Christians, quote anywhere from your Bible, I'll debunk it. I've been mean, doing it more than 10 years. Any verse you come from, I'm ready to debunk it. Isaiah 9, 6, he said there, Jesus, that prophecy is about Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6 says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It's a prophecy. Now, if you can show me a single verse where anybody called Jesus, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, I become a Christian. I'm here. I'm on camera. As I 9 6 is a prophecy. Show me anyone who called Jesus, I become a Christian. Your time is over. Go on. I, I have read Isaiah 9, 6 that give us a very clear explanation that prophecy was based on Jesus Christ and he fulfilled it when he came on earth. Now, why do we call Jesus the Son of God? That is one of the things that many Muslims don't understand. Jesus, according even in the Quran, I don't know what surah, that Isa was the word of Allah. He was the word of Allah. But now you got to look that this word came in Mary and bear a son. And because the word became flesh, and that's why they call him the son of the Most High God. Even angel Gabriel told Mary, you will bear a son. And his name shall be Yeshua. And Yeshua in Hebrew means God our salvation. Now, if you ask yourself, who saved us? Is it not God? That was God made manifest in the flesh. I will read for you uh, first, first Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. He said, without controversy, without controversy, God was made manifest in the flesh. God was made manifest in the flesh. He was seen by angels. He was preached unto the Gentiles. He ascended up in heaven and is coming back again. And if I can read for you something in Shura Hajj, Shura Hajj fulfilled the very thing that Jesus himself said. I'm going to read it for you. Surah Hajj 22 uh, from verse 6 and 7. Uh, this one proved the Trinity. He proved that Jesus was God. God in the flesh. I will read it. Surah Hajj. That because Allah is the truth and because he gives life to the dead, and because he is over all this content. Now I'm going to read John 5 verse 21. John 5 21. And this, the Quran confirms what it is in John. John 5 verse 21. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quicken whom he will. That means he doesn't need permission from the Father. As the Father raised the dead, the Son has got the same capacity, the same authority to raise the dead as the Father is. Now, let me read this. Oh, this thing goes to me. Time, yeah. My brother, see, another, another pastor is uh, <laughs> feeling miserably. I'm telling you, as I 9 6, it's a prophecy. She plain English. Uh, I'm going to repeat again. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called, or he shall be called, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. You brought it up. A brother, another pastor, Martin brought it up. He got debunked. That's the thing. Now I'm asking you a prophecy. Show me in the Bible anyone who called Jesus, mighty God, everlasting father. I become a Christian. You see, in the Quran, in Surah, Surah, 
article in uh, Surah Al An'am, chapter number six, verse number 14. One for Allah said, He said, Kul agar lahi atakizu waliyan. Kul agar lahi atakizu waliyan. Say, tell them, salute for yourself, anybody other than Allah, as our protector, as our wali. Fatiri samawati wal ar. When he is the originator, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Well, what I you to am? Well, it is he who feeds, but it's not fair. That is Allah, Almighty God. That is his quality. He feeds his creation, but nobody, nobody feeds him. This is God, the one who doesn't eat, who doesn't need food, who is independent of all needs. And more directly, Jesus in Surah Al Maida, 575, he said, uh, Christ Jesus, the son of Maryam, was no more than, was no more than the messenger of Allah. Meaning were the messengers that passed away before him. Well, Umu Siddika and his mother, Mary was a pious woman. Mary was, Mary was a saintly woman. Uh, Allah said, and they both ate food. What did Allah tell us here? That they were independent. Without food, they would have died. He has said, Sumanzur and you, you fakun. Yet look how they are deluded away from the truth. Jesus was a man. He said, fully God, fully, fully God, fully man was praying to God. When Jesus, he said, he said it, he was fully God, God incarnate. Now when Jesus went into the mountainside, I keep on quoting here, to pray. John, Luke, uh, Luke 6, 12, that Jesus went out into the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Who was he praying to? God the Son on the earth, fully God, fully man, praying to God in heaven. Two gods, not one. Yes. Jesus made it clear in your Bible. He said, whatever the Father can do, Jesus can do, that Jesus doesn't need permission from the Father. You have to read your Bible. John 5, 30. I can of myself do nothing as I hear a judge and my judgment is just because I see not, seek not of my own will, but the will of him who sent me, who sent Jesus. John 17, 3. Escape me, sir, against the Trinity. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life. That they, the disciples, might know that you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So according to Jesus, who is the only true God? Is it finished? Go. Well, first of all, my friend doesn't know who Jesus is, neither does the Quran knows. Because first of all, the God Allah is not the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are two different gods. The reason why I say that, why doesn't the Quran have the Ten Commandments that God wrote and gave it to Moses? They don't have it. Now, when he regards Jesus, you got to read it very carefully. Because how can a human being like you and I have the ability to walk on the sea of Galilee? He had power to raise the dead. He had power to cast out devil. And not only that, one day there was a man who was mud, completely mud eating in a dustbin. But he lived in a graveyard. When Jesus went close to that guy who is violent, the guy said, you, Jesus, you are the son of the most high God. What have you come to do? Have you come to torment us before our time? You can go to a graveyard where there's a madman. The, the demon won't say nothing. Demon and evil and Satan, they know that Jesus is God in the flesh. When Nebuchadnezzar burned 